Stephen Dresch was asking similar questions. He had been a Republican legislator in Michigan, now dedicated to exposing what he called the bioweapons mafia. And he was making an astounding claim that if anyone could provide a window into the anthrax letter attacks, it was a leading scientist at Britain's top military lab, Porton Down. Porton Down had received the AIM strain from Fort Detrick. The first time that I heard of Dr. David Kelly was soon after 9-11. The anthrax letters had just hit the U.S. While public investigations seemed to sputter, I had begun to penetrate what I have come to call the International Bioweapons Mafia. If anyone knew the secrets of the International Bioweapons Mafia, it was David Kelly. Then, he too turned up dead, dead in the woods. David Kelly took a walk in the woods near his home, slit his wrist, and killed himself. Kelly had also been a top UN weapons inspector in Iraq. At the root of it all is whether Dr. David Kelly was the source of stories that the British government had exaggerated intelligence reports in order to draw the country more easily into war. Dresch was on his way to England to investigate David Kelly's death for himself, and Cohn decided to join him. Investigating the death of military microbiologist David Kelly was just the beginning of our journey with Private Eye Dresch. What might Kelly's death illuminate about the secret world of anthrax and its international connections? The Ministry of Defense moved with great speed this afternoon, confirming that there will be an inquiry led by one of Britain's most senior judges. Lord Hutton heard 74 witnesses in just 22 days, none of them under oath. Many considered Hutton's report clearing the British government of wrongdoing a whitewash. The official ruling of suicide was challenged by a group of medical experts who called for the reopening of a coroner's inquest. Dresch and Cohen flew to London the day it was scheduled to take place. Despite inconsistencies in the forensic evidence, the court, in less than 10 minutes, announced there would be no further investigation. I didn't believe one moment that he took his own life. Kelly, I mean, he would not take the type of knife he took if he was seriously going to commit suicide. It's a cover-up of a cover-up. And, and of course, they get to the, the point they just can't, can't stop because he's opening the can of worms. We sought out John Skurr, Britain's leading vascular surgeon. Skur questioned how Kelly could have died from a self-inflicted pocket knife wound. Cutting the wrist is usually something that's done by often young people, girls, some men. It's a sort of cry for help. It's not generally regarded as a reliable way of committing suicide. In this case, as I understand it, and it's only the information I've been given the wrist, it would have been necessary to use the knife really the wrong way round and go up. So it's, it's an unusual way of trying to cut your wrist to start with. <laughs> Louise Holmes was the first to discover Kelly's body. Could you describe where the body was? Yeah, the body was against a, a tree um, with the head and the shoulders just slumped back a little bit on the tree. But you would not say he was lying on the ground? No, he was. Uh, my, the way that I described how he was was the way that I described it in court, with his head and his shoulders against the base of the tree and the rest of his body on the floor. The police report described the body as laying flat on the ground. Who might have moved Kelly and why? One British member of parliament concluded that the Hutton inquiry had been a cover-up. By that time, Dresch was dying of cancer, and Cohen was back in London on his own. I am convinced beyond reasonable doubt, more than that, in fact, that uh, David Kelly was murdered. Norman Baker, a long-standing member of the House of Commons, had spent a year investigating Kelly's death. There were 
no fingerprints on the knife which David Kelly allegedly used to kill himself, um, which, to my mind, only reinforced my view that it was uh, extremely difficult to conclude that he had committed a suicide. Who may have wanted David Kelly dead, and why? Gordon Thomas, an author who writes about the world of secret intelligence, had met David Kelly a few months before his death. David Kelly was a major part of the biological warfare intelligence world. He knew more than perhaps anybody I know, and perhaps anybody anybody knew, and he was brilliant. That's why he was always consulted by other intelligence services. If they got into a, a mess, CIA, Canadian intelligence, and they'd say, we better ask Dr. Kelly what he thinks. He had explored with two or three writers, of which I'm happy to include myself, the possibility he could write a book about his life. And I said to him at the time, you know, David, you signed the Official Secrets Act. He said, I know. And yes, I'll need somebody else to write it with the information I provide. I said, but you know, you won't get away with it, David. Mm -hmm. 